let's continue to pray and invite the Holy Spirit in our midst. Father God, as we come in your presence, we admit that we are nothing, O oh God. We acknowledge you are the God Almighty. We cannot do anything in our lives without your grace, without the Holy Spirit leading us. And we invite the Holy Spirit in our midst today, O oh God. Speak to our hearts. Let it be words that truly bring fruit into our life. Let it not be words that, that I, as when I speak, let it not be hollow in my heart, but as also as others listen as seed. Let it get a deep-rooted effect into each of our lives and let it use, be useful and fruitful for God's glory. As we come in your presence, O oh God, we pray, O oh God, let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, O oh God. Let the Holy Spirit convict our hearts, O oh God. Let the Holy Spirit use us, O oh God, in ways that we can never even think of, O oh God. Because that is what the Word of God says. That is what the Holy Spirit says to us. When we truly surrender, when we acknowledge that we are nothing and we invite the Holy Spirit and we seek him without any selfishness without a need when we just seek him for who he is when we seek him for the gifts of the holy spirit when we ask and we cry out and we plead and we fast to god so that god can fill us with an anointing that we can use for the kingdom of god and not not for personal reasons not for personal gain but to truly bring about thousands and millions for you oh god help us to truly look to your word and let the holy spirit speak to us today oh god in jesus name we pray um, we as youth and um, young adults and all we've been learning about Romans 12 um, and for the past two three weeks for 21 days each of us has been talking about one verse one word from each and while I was praying and seeking God what the Holy Spirit reminded me was about true fasting. So before we can dwell into that, um, if we can read Romans 12, 1. Thank you. So it, this talks about presenting your bodies as a holy living sacrifice. A lot of definitions of living sacrifice. But the Holy Spirit reminded me of my faults. I, there was a time when I would sit in God's presence. We would have a scheduled time of fasting and prayer. But with busyness, with things, it just got away from me. So when I was praying, the Holy Spirit reminded me of my oath and my prayer and my promises to God about sacrifice, about fasting. Um, when we talk about sacrifice, what, what's your definition of sacrifice as a living sacrifice? What do you think you have to sacrifice? Any of you? What all do you think we can sacrifice when we talk about living sacrifice? Desires? Sorry, what else? Time. What else? What else can we sacrifice? What does God, or the Word of God, what is our expectation of sacrifice? So I wrote down a few things. There might be a lot more. First is time. Second is our work, our fun our rest. Um, it is different for every one of us. A lot of us have big debts. A lot of us have big fun. A lot of us have big rest, depending on what it is for everyone, right? But we do it more than what is necessary, sometimes because of our bad habits, sometimes because of various reasons, right? So the Holy Spirit today is reminding us that some of us have to sacrifice what we are running after. If you're running after bigger houses, bigger cars, bigger stuff, and that's making you work more, not spending time with your kids, not teaching our kids, 
the value of prayer and fasting as a family together, right? We do a lot of things in the holidays. Um, it doesn't have to be Christmas related. It could be fasting and prayer. It could be New Year's. It could be so many other things, right? We want to develop our children with, with things that they learn and, and, you know, do things together. But do you or do we as a family, do we as a church, do we teach our children to fast together, right? Uh, do we teach our children as our own living experience, you know, as an example that we ourselves learn to fast. There are so many fasts in the Bible. Daniel fasted from the meat, from the wine, right? Different people fast differently, but there are a lot of times with Jesus, so many others who fasted for everything, for 40 days, right? Food and water. What are we fasting? What are we truly sacrificing, right? Third thing is food. And then the fourth could be your time that you spend with your family, which is a good thing, but do you do it more than what is required? Are you making that as an idol? Do you spend time with your friends outside of work or with work friends or with other friends? Um, do you spend too much time watching sports? Whatever it is that you do that's excess, that could really borderline idolize, could take away God's priority. Is that something that you need to sacrifice? So as we get into the Word of God, let's spend two minutes praying and asking for the Holy Spirit to reveal to us, to convict us, and to truly get into the new year, taking new commitments, making renewing our oaths that we have made in the past. Because there were times when, you know, we, we're, we look at the Israelites, for example. Every time they went away from God, the reason why God put them into captivity was for them to see God, to cry out to God, right? Sometimes it took them 400 years to do that. But when they did, God delivered them. But there are times in our own past when we have gone through sicknesses, where we have gone through joblessness, where we have gone, gone through so many things that the Lord has allowed sometimes so that we seek out to God. But we, as children of God, are we in that habit where God forces us to fast and pray? Or are we truly doing it because we desire godly gifts, spiritual gifts, to grow further in God? So let's take two minutes, each of us on your own, uh, pray and, and ask the Holy Spirit to convict us. It's truly, and, if, and we are all at fault, even me, right? Um, so... Let's get into the new year with a new conviction. If it's something that we have done before, renew that conviction with God. As the Holy Spirit is reminding each of us, especially me, that so many promises that we have made with God, that we have forgotten and, and sometimes you've forgotten about it. Let the Holy Spirit remind us and renew that relationship, renew that conviction, renew that promise that you have made with God. Father God, we come in your presence, O oh God, as a family, as individuals, as church, O oh God. So many times, O oh God, we have made promises that we have forgotten about, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, as we take time individually in our own closets, in our own rooms, in this time before the new year, O oh God, as we remind us, O oh God, help us to renew our convictions. Help us to renew our promises. Help us to renew our walk with you, O oh God. Lord, help us to set right everything, O oh God, so that we can come in your presence and cry out to you, O oh God, so that truly, not just to seek a deliverance from that instance or from that, but Lord, help us to truly seek you for who you are, seek you for your amazing qualities, O oh God, seek you for the purpose that you have call called us for, O oh God, in this world, O oh God. Surrender our lives once again. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, I have 20 minutes. Uh, I think I've used five, hopefully. But I'll, I'll watch the time from now on. So let's read Daniel 12.10. Anyone can read, um, or I can read. If someone has a mic. Um, Daniel 12.10. 
Um, I don't know how many of you read, uh, the Bible app brings a daily verse every day. Apart from the stuff that we as a youth are doing, each Psalms every day, we're going through Psalms this, but sometimes it's a good habit to go through the whole chapter of the daily verse. So this came a few days ago, and when I was reading the chapter, the Holy Spirit convicted me of that and reminded me. So if, we, if someone can read that loudly, please. So one definition of fasting, what do we really do when we fast? It's not just about giving away food and time. It's about purifying ourselves. It's about being able to look, as Finney was talking about, sometimes we have to look how we perceive ourselves, how we look at our own selves, how God looks at us. Sometimes we have to take that time, not as a church, fasting and praying, coming to church, praying as a collective thing is good. But God expects us to fast on our own, sit in our closet, sit in our rooms where no one is looking, and then just cry out to God. Take that time to meditate on the Word of God. Let the Word of God be a reflection, be a mirror that helps us to judge our own selves. Because if we as people of God, if we as ministers, if we as teachers, if we as speakers don't do that to our own selves, then truly a lot of it, is just outwardly, right? Sometimes, sometimes, I'm not judging any of you, but sometimes we have to take that time to look on our own and see what God wants us to see. So here it talks about purifying our own selves, making themselves white. White, it means doesn't mean you have to wear white, right? Truly looking at our faults, understand where our issues are, understand where our distractions are sometimes. All right? uh, there was a time when we were so busy. Um, I want to rest. I want to pray, but I would be on my phone. Right? Sometimes it would take away one short clip, one reel would get into another, and you end up looking at your watch. It's half an hour gone. Right? Sometimes when we do that, we may not watch anything bad, at the same time, we are giving away our time and we are allowing the world and the things of the world to distract us, right? So think and see what is distracting you from God, right? What in our daily life? Are you giving too much importance to your work, your kids, whatever it is, right? It doesn't, doesn't have to be really something bad. It could be bad, but can be something good, right? So... Let's take this time as a family, as individuals, as a church, to really look in and see what it needs to be done to, for us to truly be sanctified in God's presence. Right? Um, I want to talk more about it, but it says, those who are wise shall understand. Wisdom, the Bible talks about, is being able to stay away from sin being able to hear the Word of God, allow the Word of God to speak to you, right? Wisdom, there are so many definitions of wisdom. Wisdom is about knowing what is bad and trying to get away from it. That, that is what the Holy Spirit is calling. Sometimes we know what is bad for us, but even then, we're not able to get away from it. So, as we look in this year, please take time before the new year. If, it, if you have to take PTO, if you have to take whatever you have to take, spend time sitting in God's presence individually as a family. Teach your kids to fast and pray together, to understand the importance of truly looking in our own hearts before we can truly get others to Christ. Second, um, Matthew 6, 16 and 17. I'm going to go really fast. I don't want to take too much time. Matthew 6, 16 to 17. Have their 
that you have to make a complete notice by then. On the, by your panel, who's in secret, and your panel, see what is done in secret with the board. Thank you. So this is a principle that the Bible talks about, not just fasting, about giving, about doing ministry, about anything public. Pharisees, so many people are at fault for this. Sometimes we get so caught up in, in doing things for church, doing things ministry-wise, praying, getting into prayer lines, getting into meetings, attending all the prayers, everything, publicly. But when it comes to truly spending time, are we as individuals taking that time to truly fast and pray without anyone knowing? Only you and God. Because that's what true fasting is about. That's what true prayer is about. Your relationship, your walk with God. So... All of this is to remind us to truly spend time in God's presence, right? Not to look or do things in front of others, but to truly get your relationship sorted with the Lord. So when we do things, when we fast and pray, it's good to fast and pray for things when we are sick, when we have needs. All of that is good. But how many times do we fast and pray for our spiritual growth? Just that. Nothing else. How many times do we fast and pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit? All of us, most of us have received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We speak in tongues, probably the same tongue for years. But why have we not gotten another gift? Right? The Holy Spirit was telling me when I was praying from, I have had a lot of issues with my job, as in just spiritual battles. But when I was praying for the Holy Spirit for, for another interview, the Holy Spirit reminded me, do you pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially for the one that I've promised you? Do you pray like this? Do you fast like this for just a spiritual gift? Do you have the ability to fast for days, fast for hours, fast for meals, just to grow in the Lord? That is what is expected of us. It's good to fast and pray for things, for our kids, for all of that. But are we one of those selfish people who are looking to God just for things that we need? Or are we one of those people who truly look to God when no one else is looking and we just pray and seek God and increase in our gifts so that truly when we preach, when we sing, when we worship, heavens come down, the Holy Spirit comes down, and speaks to everyone who is in front of us. People that are, we work with. We don't even have to say the God's gospel. They will see the God in us. They will see the Holy Spirit in us. And they will realize that that's the power that we were talking about. right? So more than we can preach, our actions, our words, our intentions will speak to them. That is what the Holy Spirit is trying to remind me again. Not to, it's not bad to pray for things, but truly, we as people, especially Pentecostals, especially Malayalis, all of us, we have stopped at speaking in tongues. Most of us don't even know what we are speaking because we don't have the interpretation of tongues as a gift. Most of us pray for others, but we don't have the, the gift of healing. So many, so many gifts, we stop and we are satisfied with just speaking in tongues when there is so much more that the Holy Spirit wants us to achieve. Because if we are going to be people who will just be satisfied by coming to church and praying and speaking every now and then and, and or singing every now and then, that is not what we are called for. That is not alone what we are called for. We are called to go out to the world, but we are called to go out in power. But we are called to go out in anointing. We are called to go out and make and do miracles in the name of Jesus. That can only happen when we truly receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Going ahead, Luke 4.2. Um, just, this just talks about Jesus fasting for 40 days um, without food and water. doesn't mean that we have to with water or for 40 days. It could be just two meals, one day, two days, depending on what you can do. Right? It's, it's about getting better. So... And that helped him overcome the devil. 
that helped him to understand the word and speak the word and how to defeat temptation and all that. So whatever we are going through, right, fasting is not just a tool for us to get things. It is a way for us to speak to God, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, harm ourselves, allow us not to be distracted and to seek God. All right, going ahead. First Peter 5.8. This is one of the true definitions of fasting. If anyone can read that. So, sober-minded. Sometimes what I've been doing is I would watch, use my phone just to distract not think about all the worries, not think about all the stuff. When I'm watching something, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm, I'm relaxed. So for, for a lot of us, that helps us relax. A lot of, for a lot of you, it could be listening to music, whatever it could be, right? But are we sober-minded? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us? It would only speak to us when we stop ourselves from getting distracted, right? So that is a reminder. Um, going ahead, be watchful, right? Fast from what I write, wrote in my no notes was fast from anything that distracts us, right? I want to, I don't know, this example is just coming to me. Sometimes when we go through difficulties, because we haven't received the anointing to get through it on our own, sometimes we go seek people. We go seek ministers. We go seek pastors. We go seek other people to pray for us, which is not a bad thing, which is good. But we make a habit of it. We truly make a habit of it. We are 70 years old, 60 years old, 30 years old, 20 years old. We always make a habit of reaching out to others' anointing that the Lord has placed on them so that we can get a short fix. We can get a quick fix. And then we, once we get healed, we go back to our old ways. So the Holy Spirit wants to remind us today. It's enough of time that we look at others for a quick fix. We want to achieve what God has kept for us. And we can only do that when we truly seek God. So truly, let us humble our lives. Let us humble ourselves. Let us not look for shortcuts. Let us not look for short ways because every time the Bible talks about people who have done that, they've never been with God for a long time. So, we have done that for our sicknesses, for our kids' sicknesses, for so many things that we require. But the Holy Spirit is reminding us are we truly seeking God because we want to grow and we want to become a blessing for God or are we just seeking God for the things we need? Going ahead. Joel 2.1. Another definition of fasting. I think I've got the verse wrong. Um, what I wrote here was, Return to the Lord with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Could someone find that verse? Verse 12. All right. Sorry, thank you. I might have missed it too. Uh, Yeah, so that's another reminder, that's another definition, right, where the Lord promises that deliverance will be there. Whatever we are praying for, whatever we are crying out, whatever season that our life is in, there is deliverance, right? There is deliverance. But we as a family, we as individuals, we have to come back to the Lord. We have to take time to fast and pray, whatever it is. God is able to deliver. There is nothing impossible for our Lord. But 
we need to seek God for who he is, not for what he can do for us. Going ahead. Esther 4.16, I believe, or 10. My handwriting's pretty bad. Talks about Esther fasting. Thank you. Another thing that the Holy Spirit is reminding that we have stopped doing as, a, as, a, as individuals, as a church, is to fast for others. When people stand up for testimony and they ask for prayers, when they're going through sicknesses, when they're going through a difficult period in their life, when they ask for prayer, we say we will pray. We do include them in our prayers, but how many of us remember the times when we went through it? How many times did the Lord deliver each one of us and our family members from a difficult state? So how do we learn to forget that time that the Lord led us and delivered us out of that? So as a reminder again for all of us, when our co-brethren, when we, the brethren that we pray in Christ together with, when we as a family, when we as a relatives, when we as church go together how many of us truly take time to fast and give away our time our food or whatever fun and seek God and cry out for them there is a time that we need to stop being selfish as a holiday my last note was has a holiday tradition we do want all of us to spend time with our family, build gingerbread houses and all that, which is really good, right? Have things to do with your family that they will remember. Things, but as a tradition, if you are not doing it, let's add for smaller kids a meal, for bigger kids a day. As a family, let's add some time of fasting and prayer before the new year begins. Let's remember who our creator is. Remember what God has called us here for. It is not just to come to church. It is not just to pray morning and evening and go to bed. It is far greater than all our jobs, all our goals. It is for a bigger calling that we sometimes have forgotten about it. So as the Holy Spirit reminds us that the calling that the Lord has called us for, help us to truly as a family, get back to that calling. Remember your children. Lord, help us to remind our children who our Lord is, who our King is, who our God is, who our Creator is. And help us to teach them, O oh God, to remember your promises in their lives. Help them to teach them, to Lord, to seek God for their own selves, how to look to God, how to cry out to God, how to God, make God their personal God, not just to our God. The only, uh, Missy reminded me of uh, the example of Cornelius. And I think there are times when we as a family or others are going, no matter even if you are a Gentile, when you just have a right attitude, when you just seek God, the Holy Spirit will find the biggest prophet as possible, right? Peter, God spoke and brought Peter to Cornelius' house and saved Cornelius' house. So right now it's, it's a reminder for all of us, more than our individual needs, more than our family needs, let us pray for other people. Let us pray for, for God's anointing. Let us pray for God's power so that we can declare the word of God, that we can bring many families like Cornelius, that we can be prophets and that can, we can be children of God, that God would tell us 
to go speak to certain people. Go speak to a per- person who is looking for God. Right? Let us be that people where God would truly come into our lives, where God would speak to us on a regular basis and remind us of the ministry that God has kept for all of us. Father, we come before your throne of grace. Let this word that you spoke to us about, Father, let it be a word that is a reminder to us daily. Let it be a word that we just not forget, O oh God, but truly, as we get into the new year, as we make new promises, as we remember the old ones, help us to rekindle our walk with you. Help us to fast and pray because you are the King of Kings. Help us to fast and pray because the Holy Spirit has kept for us gifts of the Holy Spirit that we need to pray and cry out for, that we need to receive so that we can truly go into the world and proclaim the Word of God with power with, and do miracles in your name, O oh Jesus, and let them know that the God that we worship is the only living God. We come before your throne of grace, humble our lives once again. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray.